Steve? I would, I would volunteer to chair the meeting. Okay. I second that. <laughs> I <Thanks>. agree. <laughs> Everybody, Thanks. hands up. Yes. Good. All right. There you go. All right. So, let's roll. Yeah. One second. Uh, let me make sure we're live on YouTube. I'm doing that right now. Yeah, I don't think I'm skilled enough. I think I can manage a meeting, but I don't know enough about wetlands, I think. All right, you folks are good to get started. All right, I'd like to call the meeting of inland wetlands um, held remotely uh, to order. The date is August 26, uh, 2020. And the roll call, I assume Rick Nillette is absent. Excuse, Pam. Uh, Russell Davenport. The same will be absent. He'll be joining the meeting later. Today. Okay. Uh, Christine Hunter is present. Here. Andrea Kuicki. Present. Uh, Mary Ann Marino. Present. Absent. Excuse. Steve Molinelli, present. Jackie Mulvey. Present. And Kim Termini. Kurt Temmie, present. Um, in terms of the approval of minutes for July 15th, we did that last meeting. Um, and we're waiting for the minutes from last week's meeting of August uh, 19th, uh, which we did not have in our packet. So we'll just uh, table that for now. Um, the agenda, agenda review items. Uh, Pam, we listed several items that we wanted to include. Uh, in our next regular scheduled meeting. So is there anything else that we can add or we're not obligated to add? Not anything. I, I had emailed you folks regarding um, a couple agenda changes. Um, Paul Marina uh, is not prepared to go forward at this meeting. I don't know if you're ready to cover that, Steve. No, okay. Uh, he's asking not to go forward. I spoke to Paul today and he just had uh, the Cara on his property earlier today. so. I'm sure that's why. Um, based on the email that you sent out, uh, Leroy Emmethal application 2026 and 2027 are gonna be put back to the back of the agenda. Is that accurate? Um, um, I had explained, I don't know if you wanna, I, I, I had contact with, um, just for the rest of the commission, I think, you know, for the record, um, I talked to Steve today and I've also talked to Jackie. They're budding properties. Uh, Steve is a direct abutter. Uh, Jackie's one property over. And you both had indicated that you were likely to recuse yourself from the consideration of this application. Is that correct? To yes. me, it's correct. And Kurt was not at the last July um, 15th meeting. I'm sorry, August 19th meeting. And he hasn't had a chance to review the record so he wouldn't be in a uh, position to uh, review the application or the, um, to this, this evening. And so I emailed um, Mr. Emmerthal and then he hadn't gotten it, but he was the first one to Zoom tonight. And um, I explained to him that it, it, it wasn't very wise to have just Christine and Andrea review the application tonight. So I don't know if you want to table, formally table his application to um, September 16th. Well, under the circumstances, I think we have no other choice but to table. Right. So I'll make a motion. Can I make a motion being I'm going to recuse myself, Pam? Uh, how about, um, yeah. To table it? Yes. Yes. Uh, I'll make the motion to table application 20-26 and application 20-27 to the regularly scheduled meeting on September 19th, I believe. Yep. Okay, I second. Okay. All in favor of tabling it? Aye. Seems unanimous. Okay. Okay. Um, Application 20-29, uh, Gary and Beverly Paganelli at 856 West Wakefield Boulevard. The proposal is to prepare to repair two sections of lake wall, replace third dock with waiting area, add boat lift, double jet ski lift, and trampoline, register two docks, and add a shed. 
Is the Correct. applicant present? Yes, Gary Paganelli representing Beverly and Gary Paganelli. Okay. That's what we're going for. Um, we can walk through it if you'd like. We can walk from the left side of the plan, start with the docks, the jet ski lift, and the, uh, it's a party boat lift. It looks like it's a little large for the dock, but it's, I think our problem is our dock is a little short. It's 20 feet long and the boat is 27 feet long. So that's what's taking place on that. Bam, I kind of lost everybody here. Hi. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry, I've got the wrong one up. No, I know. I'm sorry. It's the map in our packet, though, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, I have it. Gary, do you see the map? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, you want to explain it to us? Okay. On the far left, all right, you'll see the green. The far left green is for a jet, double jet ski lift. On the opposite side of the dock is for just a single party boat lift. As we come across, we'll come over and you'll see another green line coming out. That's a silt fence, proposed silt fence for the repair. There's two 10 foot sections of uh, wall that have basically the tops have fallen off. So it's just, it's when the water goes down, restacking. No excavation whatsoever in that particular area. It's just restacking and that is, it's a dry wall. So it's restacking dry. Um, if you come out, you'll see where a proposed uh, trampoline is. And that just shows 10 foot from the uh, from the line, okay. And then we get into taking out the blues, the existing dock, there's a five foot concrete pier that goes, sets on the, on the uh, lake bottom. It's removing that, it's removing all the concrete steps in the big concrete pad there and the stairs going up. And at that point in time, redoing the wall and putting a couple of upper walls for a, a waiting area. Um, and then above that, above that, you'll see the hash green, and that was for a proposed shed for just the toys and grandchildren's stuff that'll be left on the lawn, I guess. How far out is the trampoline? Trampoline, the furthest it's out is probably 48 foot. I know it's a 50 foot. Um, I think he has a line on this map. Well, he thought he had a line on it. It was a 50 foot uh, maximum anyways in the rules. So it's not out, it's not out 50 feet. But from the littorial line there's a 10 foot buffer that you have to have too. But we, uh, we do understand that it has to be any part of the trampoline at any given time has to be within the 50 feet. The positioning of the trampoline, Gary, uh, you're measuring the 10 feet to the littoral boundary to the outside of the trampoline Correct. or to its, to its swing point? No, to the outside. Is, if it swung that way at the maximum swing, it would be to the outside of the trampoline. And it would still be 10 feet? Correct. Correct. Okay. So, and that, that stands true with the 50 foot. Okay. Now, what's presently on the waterfront now in terms of structures? All three docks. Okay. And, and I have, a, uh, right now, to be honest with you, I have a boat lift where, that, where the party boat lift is going. And I have, a, I have a, par, uh, a regular boat lift on the opposite side. I did okay. move both my, both my boat lifts over here. We are taking one out of here this weekend, hopefully. So we'll be trying to get compliant. Trying to get compliant by re replacing the second boat lift with a double jet ski lift. Correct. Okay.
Pam, for, for, for our purposes, are we accepting this application or can we move ahead and consider approval or this is the first meeting where we've spoken about it? All of what you just said. It is the first meeting that we spoke about it. Um, so, so our obligation is to accept it. Yes, I, I don't okay. think he was expecting approval. No, no, I, I just for clarification purposes. Yeah. From any of the commissioners, is there anything lacking on the map and both what we we're looking at and that's in our packet that we would uh, like to see included? How wide are the present docks? The docks are eight foot wide and 20 feet long. Okay. How wide is the, the overall property, uh, Gary? 205 plus feet. Now, at one point there were two separate properties. I think are it was, they... I, I think it was three. Okay. You know, when, we just bought this place in, in January. And Peacocks had a home. They bought the lot next door. Mike Peacock built this house. And then after the home was built, where, we're where I proposed to take the dock out, there was another home there. And he had bought that and tore that down. So primarily, it's, it would have been four 50-foot lots. But as far as I know, how it was broke up was three, three lots. And all yes. three lots are under one ownership? Correct. Correct. It's one parcel today. Okay, it's one parcel because that would differentiate our decisions regarding the positioning of things based on uh, littoral boundaries in between the properties, but there are no littoral boundaries in between. There's one end, a north end, or an east-west end, and a north and that, south. Absolutely correct. It's one okay. parcel. Okay. Gotcha. <clears throat> And my understanding is everything in the blue area is coming completely out of the water. Correct. Okay. Pam, could you move the map over to the left a little bit or to the right so we could see the littoral boundary? No, the other way. Yeah, okay, got it, okay. Uh, oh, there, okay. Is that 52 feet approximately? <clears throat> It's approximately 50 some foot. Okay, so where the boat lift is, is, is take away 10, 12 feet, you're still 40 feet away. So that's okay. Correct. And the time frame to do this is during the deep drawdown? Yes, yes. And the expectation is you're going to be able to complete the entire project? Absolutely, yep. Pim, are there any issues that you see from from a um, an enforcement point of view? I, I think even the third dock out is is good. I, I we've done this before, where you've allowed, um, you know, the improvement to recede into the property. Um, no, I think it's it's a good thing. Anybody else with any kind of concerns or issues? Just when you're removing the docks you're going to have them removed from the property immediately in dumpsters or by dump trucks it, it'll all have to go by dump truck it's okay. you know it's it's a it's a, a tough lot to work as far as as you can see the contours so mm -hmm. what would take place here is we take it with the excavator we'd have to swing with the excavator put it into a loader and then a loader would have to put it into a truck because okay. it's, it's just very confining okay to say the least but no, and with that being said, you know, there is no room to leave anything there, um, mm -hmm. you know, during this construction phase. So we'll remove them and then immediately take it off the property. Correct. Okay. Correct. Gary, your, your new docks or the docks that you're putting in are going to be wood or uh, prefab? No, I, I'm not putting any docks in. Those docks are existing. All three are existing right now. Oh, okay. So what's there all, is there. You're just repos you know, you're just registering. All, all I'm adding, all I'm adding is anything in the green. Okay, the boat lifts and the jet ski lift and the, and the stone walls for the for the uh, waiting area. Correct. Okay. 
but everything else, all three docks were, were existing. I think I apparently one dock came with each piece of property, I guess, yeah. you know. How far back is the waiting area going, Gary? It's only going 20 feet, I think it is 20. I, I gave you a, I hope you have a drawing. Um, it's 23 foot six is from the, from the front wall to the curve on the back of the, uh, the waiting area. There should be a drawing in your packet. You uh, huh? Yeah, that has a lot of that has a lot more elevations and in, in uh, measurements. If you want to open it, it's hmm. Pam, do you see any issues with that waiting area? Nope, you've done it before. I, I think losing anything that's in the water that you get rid of is a good thing. Okay. All right. To the any any other concerns or points that any commissioner would like to raise? No, sir. Would somebody like to make make a motion to accept it, please? I make a motion to accept uh, ap application IWWC 20-29. And then not significant, just you wanna qualify your motion, not significant activity or what? Oh, right, yeah. Um, is there any public interest or a significant activity attached to this application? No. I hear silence, so I assume that no one has any objection or would like to raise it. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Chris, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. All in favor of accepting? Aye. Looks unanimous, Pam? Yep, it does, unanimous. Thank you. Gary, you're up thank again. Thank you very much. <laughs> <clears throat> The next item on the agenda is application um, uh, 20 30, Gary and Bev Beverly Paganelli, 538 Wheelers Point, replace existing dock and with patio and a double jet ski lift. The existing deck with patio and a double jet ski lift. Okay, again, Gary Paganelli representing Beverly and Gary Paganelli at 538 Wheeler's Point. Um, we've, if you, we'll start at the water. It says proposed boat, boat lift. The property has a boat lift permit already. Okay, um, I just didn't catch it when I had um, Wiley do the, do the plan. But we, have, we want to add the, the uh, jet ski lift which is in front of the boat lift. And what we don't have on there that I have a permit for, but I wanna register it, is I have the permit for the trampoline also. So just to let Pam know, I'd like to register that so that we have everything registered at once. Gary, is it located on the dock? I don't remember. Pardon me? Is it, look, am I muted? Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I, is the trampoline located on the drawing? You know, it's it's not because I've, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know if you had a drawing with it located from when they got the permit. I, I don't have any of that. I don't think we do, but I mean, you have so much frontage there. I think yeah, you, just have... want, yeah, you just want to let the commission know where you're going to put it. And, you know, you just obviously, you know, the rules It can't go out past 50 feet and it has to not go within the littoral boundary. So correct, correct. So if maybe for the next meeting, we can just update this and you locate it. You know. All right. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And I, that that I apologize for. I missed it. I missed a couple of things on this. <laughs> but so from there, we'll move up towards the house. We had it. We had a dock, a deck. The deck. Um, 
is exactly the same size as what we have proposed here for, for a patio. Um, the deck was in pretty poor condition when I bought the home. I, I patched it along the way in it. Um, and then I had a problem this spring with, with the foundation up against the dock. So I said, well, I'm going to rip the dock out. When I ripped the dock out, I realized that they had a concrete patio under it. That was the deck. Pretty, you mean the deck? The deck, rather, not the dock. I'm sorry. That had a concrete patio and a bunch of concrete piers and stuff. And I took it upon myself at that point in time. I took the concrete out, the, the deck out, and then uh, I met Pam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, it, and everything come to a halt. It, which you put fine, a silencer which, on your excavator. <laughs> I know, I know. Huh? Well, I wouldn't want to try and do it that way either. But my, my, my concern here is going to be, it's a solid rock. And I think the reason they put the deck on is the concrete that they had put on there, um, I think some was adhesed to the, to the rock and it just, um, it just cracked and shattered and heaved. So they turned around and put a deck above it. So it was an impervious, uh, impervious patio to start with, even though it had a deck over the top of it, which I know you guys look at as being impervious but um, it's a solid, it's a solid ledge. And I don't know how we're gonna look at that. So you're proposing to remove the deck and probably the concrete under it and well, go back to, and go back I, to the ledge. I have I have removed it. That's where oh, so that's that's finished. That's finished. So now you're back to the ledge. I'm back to I'm back to a fine fine layer of dirt that is or whatever they had underneath their concrete. And but you're not going to go down too far without hitting ledge. And you're proposing to put a uh, some kind of a treated uh, deck no, or uh, no? I'd like to put a paver a paver patio in there. The match papers. patios, yeah. Oh, patio, okay. Yeah. So when you walk out of the house, it's, um, you don't have to go down any steps. It's just from the house to the patio. Correct. It'd be just level going out. Level, yes. okay. Pam, is there a distinction between a deck and a, uh, a patio in terms of uh, impervious surfaces? Yeah, I don't think he's got a problem with zoning. Uh, Say it again? I don't think he has a problem with zoning. The, the deck, uh, right, Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, I gotta find your zoning table. That's what I was just looking, looking up. Uh, here we go. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, that that's something he'll take up with um, Zoning Board of Appeals. But, um, Gary, because if I'm not mistaken, you, you'll need a variance for coverage for that patio because you're not proposing to do it with pervious pavers, right? It's just... No, I, I'll do it with pervious pavers. But, you know, it's just going to be a difficult chore because I'm going to have to take some stone out to do it with a pervious paver. I am playing a pervious paper, yes. Yeah, so, so you know, you, you can see from the zoning table that if he doesn't do uh, pervious pavers, he's got a problem with coverage. There's an increase. If he does it with pervious pavers, then um, then it, it, it'll go down, I, I, or it'll be a wash anyway. So it's really a zoning issue as far as that goes. Um, actually, wetlands-wise, if it's pervious pavers, uh, you'd have to excavate there to get the what is it eight inches of stone, right, Gary? Well, we have about we have about six inches right now. That's right. what I'm saying because it had the concrete pad in there. You know yeah. what I mean? So we're very close to where we have to be. So and your engineer will certify to that. You know, you, Correct. you and I have talked about that. That yeah. still TBD on that. I, you know, I, I I did go and visit this site as a result of 
you know, a complaint. Um, and he did stop immediately. And, you know, it's been how many, I want to say it's a couple months now anyway, right? Correct. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the site, but, you know, he's got a lot of shrubs that act as a natural buffer. So, and, and the way the topography is like, there, there's, there's little to no chance of um, erosion for him. You know, he, he's, it, it's a pretty, you know, he's tucked up there. So whatever he's doing, you know, you're not, he's, you know, he's got natural vegetation right, at, right like past the deck that, you know, acts as a, a a nice barrier to anything escaping. So we have like crushed stone or crushed pavement underneath, and then maybe approximately, we need approximately two inches more of a material to make it the eight inches. What type of material are we going to be using? Well, we're going to try and use three quarter inch stone because okay. that'll hold that'll hold more more water capacity you know, okay. rather than most of your patios are put on a stone dust. The top layer has to be a stone dust so you can fine grade in order to get a, a, a good lay of the stone. Okay. And then you pack it and then put the pavers? Well, you pack the pack okay. you pack the stone dust on top of the three quarter inch stone and okay. then you'll just grade it, you know, you screed it off so you can put your pavers down. Mm. Okay. Oh, the bottom line is it's going to go into a, a pervious, an impervious surface, no matter how you do it. Mm -hmm. You know, because the ledge underneath everything is going to be the stopping point. Well, it was a stopping point for the deck, too. And <laughs> 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 the concrete that was under it already, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where we are with that. I, I you know, we need a little direction, I guess. Pam, do we need an independent review on this 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 aspect of what he's doing? He, he's not proposing any changes in grade. It, you know, he's he's there's like I said, if if you saw the site, there's you know there's there's not much worry that you know anything. Okay. Okay. Are there any other outstanding concerns that the commission has before we uh, accept this application? Gary, you don't need any drawdown or anything to do any of this work. No. Everything no. is on land and you're just adding, you have a boat lift a, a, approved already. The trampoline is going to go in the water in the spring and the jet ski lift is being put in in the spring also. So there's no nothing in the waterfront at all. Correct. Just the patio. Correct. We have a motion then? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we accept application 20-30, 538 Wheeler's Point for Gary and Beverly Paganelli to replace the existing dock with patio and add a boat lift and double jet ski lift. Second. Thank you, Kurt. Just, uh, uh, Significant, oh, um, yeah. Thank you, Pam. Do we deem this a significant impact or, or a public interest? No. 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 Nope. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Show of hands. Aye. If you take that screen down, Pam. No, with the picture, do okay. Right. So, yep, yep, yep. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> All right, the next application is application 20 31. The applicant is Peter Daddio. Is Peter present? Um, he's not. Um, I had um, received an email from uh, he retained an attorney this afternoon. So the attorney requested that the application be continued uh, so he has a chance to review the file. Okay. Do we have a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion that we continue wet in the wetlands um, 20 31 for Peter and Sandy, uh, Peter Daddio for Sandy Drive 3 LLC. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. All right, our next application is application 20-32, Mark Mandel and Merrill Mandel at 410 East Wakefield Boulevard. The proposal is to install an 18 inch goose barrier fence along the top of existing seawall, modify existing boat ramp to create a 12 by 12 seating area with steps using existing stone. So I'm Tyler Burr, I'm representing the Mendels. I'm the contractor that will be doing the work. Okay. Uh, you wanna to talk to us about it? Sure, so right now, I think as I've heard with a lot of people on the lake, they have goose issues. And so currently she has a plastic green fence with those green garden stakes going along the whole seawall in an effort to keep them at bay. Uh -huh. and looking to do is come up with something more permanent, but that's not going to block her view. Um, so that's part one of the project. Part two is taking what was, I believe, an existing boat ramp um, from the previous owner and converting it basically to a sitting area for like chaise lounge chairs and that sort of thing, because uh, they've found that they don't use the boat ramp and it becomes so slippery with algae that you can't walk down it either. So basically trying to make it more functional. Dave, can you put up his uh, map on the screen for us? You're muted, Pam. Sorry. Okay. So what I was saying, it's just an old survey. It's dated um, 2006, I believe. Yeah, October 2006. This is the location of the um, boat ramp um, or whatever you want to call it. Where is the boat ramp? Right, sorry, what? Right here. I can't, where the arrow is? Yes, right here. Just below the house. Can you, for our purposes, this, not Pam, but the uh, representative describe what a boat ramp is? What, yeah, so hey Pam, do you have those pictures I sent you a couple days back or do you want me to pull it up? Yeah, I, I was gonna look for the email because those those are, um, just give me one second, folks. It's, it's essentially flagging that they've converted into a boat ramp. Um, it, it seems very homemade and the current owner of the Mandels don't know much about it, like when it was done or anything like that. But basically it becomes so slippery you can't even walk down it to get into the water. I see a picture in my packet that talks about uh, uh, steps and there's some kind of a uh, a wall to the left of the steps and it looks like a uh, yeah yeah that's so this it. is so essentially you know they have this ramp that serves them no purpose and so what she's thinking she wants to do is basically convert it to a flat area so the intent is to lower the inland side of the ramp and then raise the lake side of the ramp using uh, two steps, basically. And you, you, the proposal is to bring the height of the water side of the ramp up to the wall height? Not quite. It'll, it'll be about half, maybe a third of that wall height. And then the intention will be to have a step basically between the lawn and what will be the level area to create that, that space where they can hopefully put a couple chairs. Okay. So all of that rock that we see in the picture is coming out. It's it, essentially, it'll come out and the gravel underneath it, basically on the inland side, will then be pushed towards the lake in an effort to level it. Um, 
So my goal here is by lowering the inland side and raising the lake side, we'll basically be net neutral with material. Um, all the flagging that you see there will then be reused to create the area. So the appearance will basically be the same on the level. Until it hits the water and then there's a step into it. Yep. So right now water washes from the lake up that ramp. Yeah, so I mean, I don't, I'm not very well versed in, in the ways of Highland Lake in terms of how high the water comes and, and goes. Um, but the way it was described to me is essentially those flaggings continue into the water and just become like ice. And so she says, you know, we have zero ability to use as a ramp. So her goal is, to, again, just to create something a little bit more realistic. that I should, uh, hold on one second, let me pull up another photo. Okay. You're in your packets, but just let me. Uh, I have a question about this. Yeah. Are you going to take some of the rocks from the way out in the lake? Uh, there will be probably a few only because they'll serve no purpose otherwise. Okay. So meant that we need them to create like a better surface in that leveled area, then yes. Um, okay. I haven't done too much digging because it's currently below water, but it looks like it's just laid over gravel. Oh boy. Yeah, there's, there's an aerial for you. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm looking at the language in your proposal. Yeah. And um, I don't see any reference to what you're proposing in the proposal. It says install an 18 inch goose barrier fence. Uh, Separate Pardon? Separate project. There's a part two. You got to go past it. Part two. So, Tyler um, presented two applications. Right. I, oh, I see it. Uh, okay. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Are they two separate? App they are. They're one application. It's one numbered application, part one and part two. Yes. Okay. So part part one, I believe, is the boat launch, and part two part two is the goose fence, which we had started. Kind of oh, backwards. Okay. Yeah, the other way around. It's the other okay. way. Yeah. Yes. All, right. All right, so let's stay with this this part two, the boat lift, and then yeah. we'll get to the other part, you know, afterwards. You're aware, I don't know how much work you do on the lake, that no excavation can be done inside the lake with machinery? I understand. Okay. You know, just I, I had um, as part of this, as part of every property that is a uh, lakefront that comes before you. We're, we, uh, well, the commission has generally requested an updated dock and mooring ordinance just to make sure that we're we're all on the same page. Sometimes people buy the properties, and you know, um, things have been put in, and you know, well, it's been here since I, I had it, but we just want to make sure that. Um, things are, you know, that they, they comply with the dock and mooring ordinance as part of, um, this is a good time, <laughs> you know, to, to grab that and, and get it, you know, all straight. So if the commission's inclined, I, I would probably recommend that you, you get an updated dock and registration form located on the survey so that, um, you know, we, we address that at the same time. Are you comfortable with making that part of your proposal? Yeah, so I've already reached out to the Mendels and explained to them that they're probably going to have to do that. Okay. So I'm going to lean on them, obviously, a little bit more for the dock portions of this, because that's not under my scope of work. Um, okay. they, they understand that, that that's going to be part of all of this. Well, my suggestion would be to them to make sure they have a, have a copy of the minutes of this meeting. Yep. 
so that they understand that it's the wishes of the commission, not you. Yeah. And looking at this aerial view, uh, that puts a whole different perspective of what your project is. Yeah. So you, you're not going to go to the front of the horseshoe. No, no, no. You're going to go where the stones are, right to where, where the arrow is now. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, because you, you can see where the flaggings kind of end, where those darker pieces are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the intent is basically to create that lower step somewhere in that range. And then the upper step, obviously, on the inland side. So a step down, and then the one step down, and then, and then the flat, flat, and then, and then step down into the water. Yeah, exactly. Is that going to be concrete? No, it'll be all made of the flaggings. So I, if anything, it'll all be dry stacked. And honestly, I'm I'm hopeful that those flaggings are thick enough that they can basically make a step themselves. It'll need some dimensions of that. Yep, so the boat ramp currently is 12 feet wide. And so the goal will be basically a 12 by 12 square. With two steps. Yep. Are you bringing any kind of fill in to build the, that up? No, the, the, like I said, the plan is that by lowering the uphill slide, we, we then gain the material to build up below the, the lower end of that area. So what I had done was I took a laser and I went to the top of the inland side of the walls and measured to about where we thought the lower step was going to be and I had about 14 inches. So I figure if I raise the lower seven and then lower the upper seven, I'm net zero. And each step would be how deep? Seven inches. Pam, do the steps have to conform to a regular step size height? Building, I tell you, Mark, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll ask Mark about that. Okay. And there's a few stones, if I'm looking at it um, straight on the map to the left, are those going to remain in place or are you going to remove those for grass? Uh, sorry, Pam, can you pick it up quick? Yeah, if, you, if I'm looking at the map, there's about three stones in a grassy area. Oh, no, those aren't part of the scope. Okay. No, those will stay. Hey, uh, Tyler. You, you attached uh, four photos. What is this? That's for the fence portion of the project. What's, do they, does this currently exist? Yes. The commission would have to help me out with this. Uh, you it's, know, a, it's a slide. It's a slide like a kid's in a playground. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> She's not sure it's supposed to be there. <laughs> you know what? It's never come up in all the years of our waterfront conversations. That's never been, I mean, I'm not saying it belongs or doesn't belong. All I'm saying is this is the first time it's been pictured to my knowledge. Uh, Jackie, have you ever seen it before? No, no, nope. no, I've seen it, but I, it's yeah, never I mean, not before. Besides yeah. in person. <laughs> you know, I, I'm gonna to have to ask the, you know, Kevin Nelligan, you know, what do you do with that? Do you know how long your clients have had it there? No, I, I've only come to know them about two months ago. And how wide is it? Three feet? So it'll take up three feet of your allowed space? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No. That's not even, that's not even dark and so. <laughs> So I'm still confused with the original, the, the, the boat ramp. You're going to excavate the, uh, by hand, lift yep. the stones out, yep. raise it on both sides so it's level. Yep. Put those big stones back on top. Exactly. Well, okay. so, so lowering the, the back half, the inland side of the ramp will be lowered. to Right, to, but, it, but it'll be level. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, like I said, she just wants an area to put chairs. That's really her goal. And you said it's going to be about 14 inches on the front? So, so 14 lower on the inland side, 14, right. or excuse me, seven lower on the inland side, seven up on the lake side. Oh, seven. Um, It'll go up probably a third of what that wall looks like right now on the lake side. Does the commission have what they think they need in terms of dimensions, you know, with that other drawing? What was the question, Pam? I didn't hear it. Do you feel you have what you need in terms of the dimensions? You know, like where this is going to stop right here, Tyler, at this green line. Yeah. And then there's going to be steps beyond it. Um, do you know precise? Well, what did you, I think you did say? What What's the dimension from? It's the, about, so the, the boat ramp's currently about 12 feet wide, and the goal is to create a 12 by 12 square. So. And 12 feet stops shy of the wall. Yeah, so from the back from the back of flagstones to the water was about 17 feet when I was there. I mean, yeah, that, that changes, but, yeah. Yeah. but I'm planning to be well inland from the water from that 17 foot mark. And the steps into the water are gonna cover the entire width, the 12 feet. Yes. So there's no water eroding the property, correct? No, no. Okay. It'll be hitting those steps. It'll be hitting the ramp. It'll, yeah, it'll, that forward step will basically be what, when the water's higher, I would assume would be in contact. But again, when I measured it, it's well up from the, the inland water, that, the water edge. Okay. Well, we just need that drawn out with the dimensions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tyler, the picture that Pam put up, not the one we're looking at now, but the one that showed the ramp from the uh, from an aerial view. Yes. Would be a better picture to draw or put dimensions on for us to look at. Sure. Uh, only because it, it, perceptually, the, the picture she just took off doesn't seem to indicate where the water begins and the, the, the ramp ends, so to speak. Okay. And it, it seems like it's well set back in the other picture. Yeah, this one. Yep. Yep. Okay. Pam, can we can we accept this application as part one and part two, or must we, you know, are we going to treat it as one application with two parts? One application. All right. Are there any other questions on this aspect of the application? I'm good. Okay. Can we, Tyler, can we move to the other part of the yeah. application, the uh, area? Yes. So again, just to reiterate what I already had, said, you know, she has a goose problem, which from what I understand is, is common around this lake. She's tired of playing with her plastic, you know, temporary fence that she has up and she's looking to spend some money and, and do it a little bit more, um, professionally and aesthetically pleasing. So the goal here is basically to do an 18 inch high fence with stainless steel cable instead of, you know, a physical panel or something like that in an effort to maintain the flight lines to the lake. Obviously she doesn't want to block her view in any way. Um, so what we've proposed is basically, and, and again, on these drawings, the black line represents where the fence will be. I know it's pretty small print, but um, it's essentially nothing more than a barrier. I mean, I, to call it a fence, I don't think is fair because it's 18 inches high. We do prefer to see vegetation put there rather than a fence. Okay. And we and based on our ordinance, are we permitted to approve something like this? Uh, or is the ordinance silent? Yeah, the, the ordinance does it. It's more of a zoning matter. Okay. Um, and so I'm pretty sure you've been advised, right, Tyler? I told you you'd have to go. Yeah, back you back. mentioned that. That we probably need a variance. 
you know, it, he'll have to go before a zoning board of appeals with this. Any, any, uh, and I think it's this, I don't know if it's a variance or a special exception. Um, I think it, I'm, I'm not sure. It, it might be just a special exception. But so anyways, they'll, they'll, they govern the proximity of fences and, and stuff uh, within 20 feet of the water. Where, do, where does that leave us? Can we make a judgment on it or we just have to well, wait? Well, you know, what, you, what you're really looking at it, are, you know, the, what he's, what he's doing, what he's drilling into for the posts. Yeah. Oh. You know, you're drilling into the wall for the post, right? Um, yeah. how, how are you going to do that? Uh, we're going to use a core drill. The plan is to go six inches into the existing seawall and then mortar around the new post in order to make it plumb. And that's basically all we can give you permission or not permission to do, correct, Pam? Yeah. Yep. How, how expensive is this fence going to be in terms of the width of the property? How, how much waterfront is there? Uh, to be completely honest, I don't remember quite how many linear feet of fence there's going to be, but the plan is basically to go edge to edge of the existing seawall. What about the top of the stairs? So, the, so the basically where the stairs are, where the dock is, um, there's going to be gates that are installed that'll hinge inward. So you'd put a gate at the top of the stairs? Yep. Now, how secure is that existing wall? Because if I'm, I'm looking at the photo and it kind of looks like it's leaning a little bit. From what I saw, it looks pretty good. I mean, it could use some rejointing here and there, but in terms of okay. how plumb it is, it's, it looks really good, actually. Okay. So when you insert the posts for the fence, it's not going to make it sway any more? No. We're, I mean, we're only okay. talking about probably drilling a two-inch hole. Okay. You know, and that seawall is anywhere from probably 12 to 14 inches wide. Okay. So it's, it's relatively speaking, it's minimally invasive in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, the structural integrity of the wall. All right, I'm looking at the map, you're, the map you're showing. You don't see, you don't show any dimensions in terms of the width of the property from pin to pin and from pin, from pin to the, the, the boat walkway and, and the dock to the, the littoral boundary. I, I, you know, you have plenty of space there. We just need that information on on our our approval kind of thing okay so that that makes more sense to us uh and uh how many posts do you plan on installing roughly um so pam do you mind pulling out those pictures every eight feet every six feet it, it varies only because of the radius of the wall okay we can't hear you pam Tyler, which picture? The one that you emailed? The, um, the, the aerial photos have the post inlays overlaid on them. So you can see there, it actually tells you the exact dimensions of the various post distances. So where we have straight sections, we're going to be up to about eight feet apart. And then obviously where there's gates and things like that will be much narrower. What is that thing sticking out? The big boulder. What is the metal thing? Oh, down, I think they have a swim ladder or something. Cause I think that's why we intended it to have a gate there. Well, I think for sure we're going to need, you know, a little more detail in terms of the pictures and, and you know, your uh, installation of, of these posts um, for us to move ahead with uh, consideration. And um, as I said, you know, we need a little more insight into, uh, 
the uh, the dimensions of the property at the waterfront, uh, okay. where where things are in the water. Um, uh, you know, obviously, we're going to make an effort to visit the site and yep. to get a firsthand look at what you're talking about. Uh, and that would probably take place within the next two weeks because our, or three weeks because our meeting is, you know, next month for voting on it would come up in, in the middle of uh, September. So we need that information in a more timely manner from you so that we can have it in our hands when we visit the site. Um, does anybody feel that this is a, uh, a, a night for a public hearing? Well, yeah. I don't think so myself. Kurt, why? Well, Jack, you said something about vegetation. She better have vegetation than thing is clear. Maybe, well, I, I can get back now. We don't need it. We're fine. Anybody else? My concern in terms of a public hearing <laughs> is that if this becomes a reasonable solution to the goose problem on the lake, Everybody it, can do it. it's going to become a more common practice. Yeah. Um, it's not a negative thing that I'm bringing up. It's just a reality thing. If that changes anybody's opinion on a public hearing, let me know or let's talk about it now. I saw a hey, Jackie's do something about that. She rather she better teach him. I than, understand. Yeah. And, but I agree with that. But what you're saying, if one person does it, then that's freaking going to do it, and that's freaking going to do it. And let's see, we have a, um, um, a thing that's to the lake. So, I mean, I guess yeah. that's OK if everyone puts it up, but then the, well, geese can fly, the geese can fly over it, technically. You know, actually, Jackie, could you elaborate on that about the vegetation? Well, we, we've been encouraging people to put vegetative barriers uh, at the lake shore for, mm -hmm. for purposes of uh, drainage and for environmental reasons. And uh, I just think it might be good to consider that. Hmm. Well, that would be a prudent alternative. All right. And that would be grounds for a public hearing. Absolutely, yes. I would think so. Especially if this, if one person did put at the fence the way they want to, then everyone will, and then no one would do veg vegetation. And us, you know, committee members, we need to preserve the lake and be cautious. Of well, what we put. So maybe we should have a public hearing. And on the flip side of that, if somebody tries to apply for a similar thing, but that denied because you said visitation to the thing is still, if they see this, then they say, hey, why did he get his? I think you're mine. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm not sure what the hardship is, um, you know, but that's, that's remains to be reviewed by the Zoning Board of Appeals as far as the fence, um, if it requires a variance. Um, I, I'm not sure, you know, if you find that it's significant activity, if that's why you're inclined, you know, just so Tyler, you're aware, if, if the commission is inclined to find a significant activity, but that doesn't sound like what they're, then you would have to present with um, other alternatives and why this is the most prudent and feasible. Um, that there's not a, another better alternative than to putting up the fence, and you know that usually requires an engineer or some type of you know environmental professional to say no, no, this is the way you do it. Um, I, you know, in my head when you when you were reviewing this, I was thinking, you know, with what's in the water, are you going to want the surveyor to one, give you dimensions of exactly how much lakefront they have. Two, locate what's been, you know, uh, we're looking at a 2006 survey with one dock. Um, the property is extensive on the water. Yes. But it we is. Only, I know that. But, but we only have one dock. Right. Shown. So if there's more than one dock shown, and you know, then it got put in there sometime in the last, you know, 14 years. I think my recollection is and maybe I'm wrong. I think there's only one dock in a boathouse. 
and the boathouse stores to store the boat under it. So if I'm not wrong, if I can convince them to do bushes instead of a fence, what does that require from us? Just a, some kind of a planting uh, plan. Okay. That would very likely be approved without much difficulty. Because um, right, I think, again, you know, my only concern, and I'm a homeowner on the lake, and yeah. I'd love to solve the goose problem in, 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 in some manner, shape, or form. So that's why I think, you know, for us to move ahead with this, it, it would raise a red flag for every other homeowner kind of, kind of thing. Okay. And that's, um, that's the concern. Understood. Yeah, I think, I think her only intent was obviously to, yeah. to minimize the blockage of the view. That was her goal. Whereas, you know, if you do some kind of evergreen, obviously you're, you're blocking your view. Well, you, well can, you can put low bushes. There's people who do have them. Yeah, um, so I could, I could try to sell on like a hedge or boxwood or something like that. I'm, I'm fine with at least offering that idea to her. Um, you know, again, I think she just kind of got into the fence idea only because she already had the, the temporary green pl plastic thing up there and that's kind of where her head was at. So let me, um, so it, again, with the boat ramp, you just need more specific drawings and you prefer them on the aerial. And then for the, the fence, basically what I'm gonna tell you is that they're recommending plants as opposed to a fence. And in the event that you do definitely want a fence, one, we're gonna to have to go before zoning and two, they're gonna want explanation as to why it's better than the alternatives, correct? <laughs> Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Pam. Okay. So from an approval perspective, obviously we prefer to do the boat ramp thing when we're not going to have our feet wet building the first step. So if that, you know, can we do part of this proposal we, and approve the boat ramp and I'll and I'll figure out the fence thing and then the protocol is that we will accept the application tonight in, in its entirety. Okay. And then uh, next month on September 19th, so long as you provide us with the information we've requested uh, on the project, then we can move ahead and take a vote on approval. Okay. So, and, and, then, and, and just so for a time sequence, our next meeting is September 19th, and the drawdown will not begin until October 1st. Yeah. Understood. So if everything is from your end comes to us in a timely manner, we will make a decision unless something unforetold comes up. But the likelihood is we will make a decision and sure. you will have a time frame where the water will be beyond and within reason of your our decision. Okay. And one more follow up quickly, please. Um, if I convince them to do the plant material and I give you a proposed plant installation plan at the next meeting. If you guys approve it then, do I have to go to a second meeting to put the plants in or how does that work? No. no. Okay. No. So potentially if I can convince her to do that and I get the required information on the boat ramp, I can have full approval for both projects as of September 19th. Correct. Okay, awesome. Any other concerns? Can I have a motion to accept? I move to accept application 20 33. I got the wrong one. 20 32, um, 410 East Wakefield Boulevard to install um, goose barrier fencing uh, along the top of the seawall and to modify existing boat ramp to create a seating area. Do a second, Kurt. Check me. All in favor of acceptance? It's not significant activity. Oh. We went through that, I think. Uh, yeah, we kind of did that, didn't we? Motion. Is it not significant activity? <laughs> it is, but. I thought we came to the conclusion that, do we have to have a public hearing to determine that outcome or can, can we declare a public hearing at the next meeting? On the next meeting, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, you, you got to do it at the time that you're accepting it. Like if you're, if, you know, you got to make a finding if it's significant or not significant, if you're going to vote to accept it tonight. 
you know what? Then I think out of out of due diligence, uh, being the homeowner is not present and they have to accept the alternative. I would say we were obligated to have a public hearing only because we don't know the status of the application. So for significant activity. Correct. And, and then that just means sending out the notices to the neighbors. Tyler, you and I will talk about that. You put a sign out by the road. It, we publish it in the newspaper. And if you come at the next meeting with a different plan, no fence and plants instead, well, it's really, you know, that was the whole point of the public hearing. So. Well, right. Tyler, Tyler, for, your, for your information, the public hearing will take place earlier in next month's meeting, the, the regular meeting, and we'll close the public hearing and you will now be on the agenda for approval or not. So okay. you're not losing any time. Right. Understood. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. I second that. Sounds good. So we have a public hearing and let's make a vote, full vote on that. Chris? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, it's unanimous. And now we're gonna accept the application, Pam? Yep, you did, yep. Okay? Yep. All right, thank you, Tyler. Thank you guys, have a good night. Likewise. You too. All right, the next application is, uh, the applicant's name is Lynette McCarthy at 134 Shore Drive in Winstead. Knock down and rebuild, I guess, a home. Pam? Yes. It just yeah. says knock down and rebuild. Knock down and rebuild. It's a, um, a cottage. Um, oh, okay. Cottage. I see it. So it's knock and down and rebuild a cottage, a home. Exactly. Hey, Rob, Rob, I've just made so Can you have your plan pulled up on your screen? Can my plan? Me? Yeah. You accept my invitation. That way you can uh, pull up the plan. That's one of them. Oh, I'm not going to worry where I don't have yet. Mm. All right, that's sheet one right there. Whatever you're ready, Rob. Okay. <clears throat> For the record, my name is Robert Colabella, Principal Engineer of Laurel Engineering with an office in Winstead at 48 Center Street. Uh, I'm here today representing the applicants, Lynette and Robert McCarthy. Uh, they're applying for the raising of an existing family cottage and the reconstruction of a new cottage in the same location as the old cottage. The existing house is 32.2 feet by 22.4 feet and the proposed house is 32 feet by 22 feet so it's a little bit smaller in footprint but um, pretty much equivalent to the existing house um, additionally uh, there really isn't a lot of this is a very small site it's approximately oh it's only 32 feet wide at the top, maybe 70 feet at the bottom, and it's about 100 feet deep. So there really isn't much we're gonna be doing outside of the reconstruction of the home other than on both sides, this side and this side. On this side here, currently water flow kind of goes on to the neighbor's property. They have a shed, they have a building here and down here, and it kind of, looks like it swells up right about here and moves down and off the wall. So what we're proposing to do is put a walk out on this existing cottage and we're going to capture any runoff, uh, site runoff uh, here and send it to the rain garden there and on the other side the same thing uh, so we can catch the water that's coming off this property onto this property and also head it towards the rain garden there, um, up front, there's uh, there's already an existing porch, just moving the, the entry over a little bit to the right. 
There's an existing deck that's 20 feet by eight feet. They're proposing extending the deck out two feet uh, on towards the lake side, which is still gonna be 40 feet off the lake and two feet on the, well, that, if I can see my north arrow, that would be the southeast side. Um, then install this stairs with a three foot by three foot landing on the property. So uh, to that end, I put together the wetlands activity table, which you see over here on, on, on the side, regulated activity. There's a 95 square feet of rain garden going in, house deck and porch is 939 square feet. Steps walk and planter of 80 square feet, plaintiff grading and turf establishment which is mostly around here. There really is, I mean, the only work that's going between the existing house and the lakeside is actually just the rain garden to, to you know, catch any volume that is necessary. Actually, it'll hold all of the one inch volume stormwater, plus we had room for more. So I don't really ever see this overtopping, but water will sit there and then permeate, permeate into the ground. Um, under the deck, uh, because this is an existing deck over a pervious area, which is just dirt and grass, we'll have to obviously put a permeable area back under there because, you know, as far as our regulations are concerned, but this is a zoning issue anyway with the impervious. But it also plays into what we're doing here. And if I show you sheet four, let me just reduce this. Oh, there it is, sheet four. Sheet four gives you an idea of, so this one on this side is the existing imperv impervious surface area. And on this side, we have the proposed impervious surface area. There's a, only a difference of 56 square feet between the two. So there's an increase of 56 square feet. However, we're putting in a 95 square foot rain garden with enough volume to handle the 56 square feet with room actually, actually uh, at least another foot or so. However, if we need to for zoning purposes, decrease or at least get the uh, impervious area back to existing, we can put a cut across the back of this line parallel to the house, even it off and then use permeable pavers here, which together equals 56 square feet. And that would, uh, eliminate any excess impervious and include a rain garden to catch all of the runoff. Now going back up to sheet one, if you notice that this property has three catch basins out in the road in front of it. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. So all of the water that basically comes to this property comes from what lands on the property. It has not, there's no extra road runoff because it's all going into the catch basins now. So there's no the only other water that's coming onto the property is from this address. And it currently it flows from this across this property and then onto this property. But with the two swales, we'll be able to catch that runoff and put it into our rain garden, which has enough volume to handle that. Plus roof leaders. Now the roof leader situation is as such. Um, we were hoping to, we're hoping to, <clears throat> I, I show it going to both basins, but we're hoping to just send it to one basin if we can. Uh, if the elevations and inverts in the basin do not allow for that, what I did was created enough volume in the rain garden here to accept both the roof leader runoff and any storm drain runoff. runoff. So to that end, if you look at my impervious, uh, if you look into my 25 year return frequency calculations for pre and post development runoff, uh, that table down in the corner here, uh, existing, you have 0 0.3 or 0 0.276 CFS uh, and proposed is 0 0.282 CFS, which is a total of six one thousandths of a CFS in, in an increase, which is extremely minimal. However, if you note under here, I put a note, increase in runoff shown is conservative and does not include stormwater implementation of storage volume provided by the proposed rain garden. This would contribute to attenuate the flow during stormwater events, thus decreasing post-development runoff flows even further. And I'm confident that if this is implemented, uh, also that there 
the only increase that there could be to post-development runoff would be an increase in impervious considering all the water is captured in the roadway. So by equaling the impervious service with the, the pre and post impervious services with the rain garden, we're actually decreasing the runoff. And I think I kind of mentioned everything I need to mention. I'll open the floor to questions. What's the construction sequence in terms of what are you proposing to begin this project? Lynette? To begin it, it we, we would first, we'd have to knock down the cottage. Well, that, that's the question. When, when, when do you propose to start? Oh, when? Oh, I'm sorry. I, um, as soon as possible. We Probably in the fall. Okay. Yeah, and, like by October if we could. And the question is both to the homeowner and to uh, Bob. You're not proposing anything at all on the waterfront. Oh, there. Well, there. If you see, there's a note right here uh, to repair and repoint uh, the stone seawall. Um, all work would be done from the lakeside, and it is basically you know the the replacement of stones that have fallen into the lake and plumbing everything up. So the, that, needs, that needs to be added to the application. Yeah, the application was filled out before I was involved. So I can um, make sure that's on there before the next meeting. And um, the notes there, and it's, uh, it's in the package. It was in the original application package too that I sent. Are the docks that are shown on this map accurate? Yeah, they're existing. And it, they, it was surveyed by, by land surveyor, John DeCara. And there's no- it's 59 no, feet long. They don't, they don't plan on doing anything with the docks. No, the docks have been there forever. All right, so, so long as you don't, do anything in terms of the dock itself, then you know what exists exists, and we have no jurisdiction as to asking you to change it so long as you don't ask to change it. Um, yeah, it's that's fine. why I brought up the question. Yeah, so other than yeah. other than repairing the seawall, the lakefront will remain intact the way we visualize it now. Correct. Correct. And let that, you need to be aware that what he's meant saying is that you know. What, what the commission's been trying to do is get all the docks and, and, and that are out on the lake, you know, in conformance with the ordinance. And if you go to do any changes or make any revisions to your docks, they're going to require that the entire dock meets the, the ordinance. Okay. At that time, you know, so, so that's what yeah, I think Steve was, Steve was trying to bring up and let you know. Okay. My assumption is that as the house goes down, it's going to remove, would be removed from the site at the same time. Yeah, there so is. There's there'll be no storage. There's no storage on this site to, to do anything. So that, that dump truck will have to be waiting in the road. And you know, with the distance, I mean, really, the yeah. excavator could set up on the asphalt pad, uh, lift and turn, and you know, other than overhead wires that might be in the way, and one runs down the side of the property. Um, you know, they'll be able to just work it from, from there with the truck backed right up into the asphalt drive and kind of work it that way. It's just going to be have to be that way because there really is no place to store any of this material. And what about digging for the foundation and stuff like that? It's going to be on a slab or will it go down? Well, it's stepping uh, on the side. The uh, There's a bottom portion of the slab, uh, a bottom portion where the walkout is in, in the cellar that will be slab on grade. And then as it steps up, it'll be a traditional foundation. Okay. And what about storage of that material? Removed from site if necessary. Yeah, I don't think they're going to need it to, to, there's no really, there's no fill going into this site whatsoever. Uh, and when you get beyond the house, it gets really flat. So that's really good for stormwater runoff. It's going to really attenuate it and slow it way down. So I, I actually suspect that a portion of the runoff 
from most stormwater events won't even make it to the rain garden before they permeate into the ground, other than roof leaders, of course. If we choose, if we have to go that way, you notice I put it down as an alternate. We'd prefer to send it out to the catch basin. Clean water into the basin would be uh, better suited for what we're doing here rather than sending the water directly into the lake. Your note on your plan says repair and repoint stone seawell. Is is that really limited to just repointing it with fix, you know, putting back in place the stones that are loose, or is there any excavation, you know, is is there any segments of that seawall that you're gonna take down to the base and rebuild? No, we just need to repair it. There are loose stones. So we just need to make sure that it's secure. Yeah, I just want to make sure that uh, any any of the stones that are loose right now and haven't fallen into lake don't do that and be just remove the stones that have fallen into the lake. And they know that I mentioned to them that you know they, there's no equipment allowed in the lake and they understand that. And we have silt tents shown uh, around the, the area that they're going to work in with mostly hand tools. And um, you know they're going to obviously need a very small, obviously going to need a very small excavator to get back there. And uh, behind the wall then? it'll be behind the wall and it, it'll only be to lift up the rocks that can't be lifted manually. You know, obviously any of the rocks that can be lifted manually and put back into the wall at this point, it will be just done by hand. And, um, if there's a rock or two that are, that's too large, they'll just, they'll need the excavator to lift it into place. That's it. That'll, that work will be done. No work will be done on the lake bed at all. With the repairing and the repointing of the stone seal. So, in terms of a construction sequence, the probably one of the first things to be done is the repair of the lake wall, so you have access to a machine going back and forth the property. If the well, house first, first raise the house so we can yeah, get by, you know, then yeah, then build the ourselves a little area. You know, it'll, we'll be able to go right over that area and then go right. down like do that portion, um, maybe even install the rain garden at that time, and then kind of work their way back. Uh, as far as the site work is concerned, because once the house is constructed oh, and yeah. getting, getting down the sides, it's going to be awfully difficult because we have a six, 7.4 foot side yard on the south and a 6.1 foot side yard to the north. So yeah, getting by there is going to be difficult. So yes, that work would have to be done prior to the, after the raising, but prior to the uh, construction of the exist, of the proposed home. And the rain garden is going in regardless of the outcome of the storm drains and the runoffs, correct? Well, the, you mean the outcome of the, of the roof leaders and the yeah, runoffs? Roof right, leaders right. And if, we, if we could send that stuff to the basin, we're going to, but the, the rain garden will be there regardless. Uh, okay. Just to, to help attenuate any stormwater, make sure that there isn't a post-development increase in, in stormwater flow. Okay. The well, in, the the existing well and septic is in good working condition. You're just they have sewer. They have sewer. Okay. And city water. And city yeah, water. City. Okay. Yeah. And it's a one story. It's still the same height. It's going to be the same. Not cathedral. No, it it, it it's going to go up, but it's still within the regulations. It's twenty five foot. It'll go from twenty one and a half feet plus or minus to 25 foot, six and a half. Okay. The, the way they're, they're setting the house, it's getting, getting set a little bit lower, but they're adding a, a story. So, you know, it, it's, it's not a full level, but it's, it's, you know, about six feet plus or minus. Actually the, the seller, we had trouble, I had trouble um, getting the grades down for the, for the walkout to the seller. So the seller only ended up with a, a, a seven foot, ceiling versus what we would have normally with the eight foot ceiling to decrease the number of stairs we needed in the front of the home, you know, to get in. So uh, we could, these are actually, if you notice, these are only one foot contours. I know normally you see two foot contours on plans, mm -hmm. but as you got to the back of this property, it gets really flat. So we decided during the, the survey phase that one foot contours would be better than two foot contours. So as you see along each side, you'll only see four contours, but we have a, a seven foot drop. So there's need, the need for stairs at the front of the building just to get into the, the first level. 
but that's what they have there now, actually. So they it's just moved mm -hmm. over to the to the right. Um, other than that, you know, am I, I know that, Rob, uh, am I correct in saying that this tri this house presently is below grade from the street? Yes, uh, yes, it is. Well, you I mean that. Well, if you're at the street, you could see the, the, the No, I know house. that. But, but the but back it's... back of the house is somewhat below grade. Yes, it dropped right, right now. It drops one, two, three and a half feet, and I have it drop in about four and a half feet now. So along the each side. So here's on this side it drops one, two feet, and on this side it drops like I said almost four and a half. So this side's going to go to four feet. This side's going to go to dropping one to three feet as it makes its way around the corner. And from the front of the house to the curb? Well, the front of the house to the curb. Well, the property line is way back here into the, obviously the right of way on Shore Drive is quite large, I see. So it, it's, it's back to here. We have a, a distance of 16.8 from the corner of the porch the property line and 15.8 from the corner of the existing porch to the property line. Uh, so this actually is a foot back from where the existing one is. And it's another, say, seven feet to the curb. So it's about 24 feet plus or minus from the front of the house to the curb line. And there's no curb actually out there. It's just all, yeah. it's just open driveway across the whole front of the property. You can see the outline of the, the asphalt here. Are there any other questions from anybody? Pam, any concerns? No. no. Um, I also wanted to note on the detail sheet that we have uh, thrown some site dewatering methods and protections as needed. We've run into this before on a previous project. And I wanted to make <laughs> I know, I know. Kirk. So we ran into this before in a previous project and we had to supply this. So this comes out of right out of the DOT guidelines. And just want to make sure if you I've I've managed to try to keep the while keeping the footing of the cellar out, you know, out of the frost depth, also out of the, the elevation uh, of Highland Lake. So I'm hoping that we don't encounter any water. But which will, you know, it, it can, you can. And, and even though we're up gradient quite a bit at this point, so I'm expecting none. But if we do have it, at least we have the method in here to show them the contract, what he needs to do if he encounters and he has to dewater, he can't just dump it into the lake. He, we know that we have to put this little standpipe in and make sure that the water gets treated before it, it does anything else. Just so you, you know, I just want to make sure you knew that that was implemented in this project. Okay, sorry. No, thank you for bringing it to our attention. Yeah. Yeah. Pam, anything? Do we need a public hearing? Oh, boy. <clears throat> I would think so. Why, Jackie? Well, because it's such a crowded area and uh, it is building a house and there is going to be some excavation. So it would seem like it might be a good idea. The neighbors on each side, we brought our plans to them and showed them both and they had no problem with it. No, the good. ones directly on each side of us. <clears throat> we don't always get that, Lynette. It's tough, so I'm glad you did that. Yeah, no, that, no they, were, they were very good with it. Anybody else have concern with a public hearing? So it not. is a large project. Um, what's protocol, Pam? Well, so you know, there's a, a, if I'm not mistaken, Pam, we need a special exception for the extension of the deck and the. Yeah, but there, there's, yeah, there'll yeah. be a public hearing before zoning board of appeals, but it, it would be separate matter. It's considered separate concerns, you know, so it, it's right, really, at ZBA when you're applying for a special. They don't know their purview is not 
you know, I know it's not their purview, but they're allowed to ask us whatever. They want. I'm just I'm just mentioning that yeah. we are going to be in public hearing with that's required yeah. for this special yeah. exception, yeah. And, yeah. and they could show up and obviously voice their opinions on the deck, but they won't have a chance to voice their opinions, like Pam is pointing out, on the wetland issue. So, you know, if it's deemed a significant activity, so be it. But that's I'm just know that we'll be in two public hearings with this one. Up, so, if the commission's inclined to have a public hearing for you know, just the whole excavation, um, any of it, you know, water wise, you know, then you can even do it just in the public interest. Or if you don't see that it's necessary, you know. The, the only reason why I would support a public hearing would be for the dewatering plan when they excavate down to lay the foundation. Other than that, uh, you know, I think it's, this cottage is just gonna be crumbled and be removed and, uh, Hopefully, you know, they won't incur any water when they start to uh, pour for, for the footings and foundations. And he's addressed that issue, you know, uh, rather, you know, thoroughly, I guess. It was one of the, it was one of the things that took me the longest to, to coordinate was the, the depth of the foundation. Like I said, I wanted to keep it out of the water table and below the frost step. So when you're trying to find a place to go up as well as down you really we're limited to where and i found the place and that's why we had to reduce the ceiling height in the basement to seven feet to make sure that we were keeping our bottom of our footing at least above the the, the surface elevation highest surface mean water elevation of the lake which is shown on the plans so just want just so you know that's we did spend a lot of time paying attention to that so you don't anticipate having to use that dewatering, right, Rob? Is that what you're? No, I'm. I'm yeah, I, I really don't think it, it's going to happen. But you know, I, I have to cross T's and dot I's, and I have to keep that on the plan to make sure a contractor is aware, because you know what happens when they're not aware, and you know, you know. So um, <laughs> we, we we have to make sure that they're going to dewater the site correctly. That's all. I just wanted to make sure that was in the plans because I figured it would come up here at the meeting. Any other comments regarding public hearing from uh, Chris or uh, Adria? Adria? I think since I've been here, protocol has usually been a public hearing when we're building a new house. Is that not accurate? Because of excavating? Um, yes and no. My only concern with the public hearing might be the view shed issue. Brought up like that view, you know, any anything affecting the view should be brought up in CBA. I, I, I'm not. I don't know why it gets discussed with wetlands. Okay. I, yeah, the view view shed is not something that wetlands should be. Good. I, I agree. All right. Um, so if they're going to have a um, a hearing with CBA, then we don't need a hearing for our wetlands committee. That's your take, right? I mean, you're not asking it, right? Yeah, no. I would support I that. Mean, I would too. Okay. We have some kind of consensus? I think so. Okay, mm -hmm. let's make a motion to accept the application. It's and it would, be, it would be to knock down and rebuild the existing cottage and repoint and repair the seawall. Is that complete, Rob? Yes. Uh, Lynn, that's what yes. you're asking for? That's what I'm asking. OK. Do and, we want uh, to be registered? Well, you need to, re, uh, to put that verbiage in the application. Because Jackie brought up that it, that verbiage wasn't in the application for the we, So, But you've just entered it in now, so I don't have to redo the app, right? Okay. No. All right. No. I just wanted to know. All right, who can make a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve uh, Except. application. Accept. Okay. Accept. 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 Accept application 20-33 uh, for Lynette McCarthy, location 134 drive to knock down and rebuild the cottage. And repair. And repair. In repair. Finding that there's no significant activity. 
and there is no considered to be no um, significant significant <laughs> activity. Right. And then and, a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Okay, thank you very much. See you guys next month. So you know, yeah. our meeting next month is a short time between now and then. Correct. So if there's anything that you feel you want to present to us or give to us, like the you know the details of the uh, wall or anything else, please get it to us timely. Right. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. All right. Have a great day. Likewise. Good weekend, guys. Bye. Good night. Uh, Pam, I Pam, don't have this next one. That's what I was just going to ask. Pam, some of us may have picked up the 622 East Wakefield Boulevard application. Okay, so I can pull it up on, um, on the, um, it's uploaded to the site. So I'll pull it up. It is downstairs uh, in your packages. So. Oh, I didn't realize we had a new packet. I thought we were just doing new business yeah. from last week. This, last this was submitted um, the day before. Um, so it made it, it was new business. It was submitted the day before last week, not today. No, the day, I'm sorry, the day before. Yes, last, uh, yeah, last week was um, your regular meeting. Is she uh, in our packet? Because I don't have it in my packet. It, it was it made it. It made it onto the agenda because it was submitted the day before. But it was not in last week's packet because. Oh. Okay. So I don't so, have it. Okay. So it's downstairs, yeah. Yep. But so it is old business, and I'm going to share it. And I see that Mr. Wilson is here, and he can speak to it. Hi, folks. I'm Dave Wilson. Uh, I apologize for the. Uh, late submittal. Uh, I'm new to the area and unfamiliar with the uh, processes of the commission. Um, I am looking to repair and repoint my seawall. Uh, at this juncture, I've got uh, a number of sinkholes behind it uh, where the lawn is being washed out. Uh, I'm also looking to uh, repair the pier that is underneath the dock and raise the dock uh, back to level. Hey, will you put up the picture? Yes, I am. I, I had the survey up, and I think that the application uh, included photos. It's uh, probably going to help Mr. Wilson describe what he's doing. Not that one. Uh, where are the photographs? That's the old application, Pam. Yeah, I know. I'm looking for the photographs that are part no, of this is this is McCarthy. We just we just finished. Okay. All right. Right. That's all right. Oh boy. All right, well, let me get this loaded. Okay. So I, I can pull them up and share them if you like. It, yeah, yes. can you do that? Uh, I just enabled you to share your screen. Can you do it? If not, I, I can do it. Um. Yep, I think I got it. Folks, see that? Yes. You see a picture of the lake and the house. Wonderful. Did you bring up the um, 
the survey first, did the CARA survey? And Pam, that's gonna be you. Thank you. Okay, David. Good, all right. So uh, I've marked off uh, four sections along the waterfront. Uh, most of this is going to be uh, repointing and replacing stones, uh, as well as backfilling uh, areas that have been washed out in the lawn. Uh, section one uh, is roughly 10 feet or so on the north side of the property, uh, just requires repointing. Uh, section two, we're gonna need to take that down to uh, essentially ground level and rebuild uh, because it's starting to lean into the lake. Uh, section three is repointing and backfilling. And section four on the south side is in pretty good shape, just some minor repointing. So we'll be doing work along the entire length of the seawall, but uh, to a greater or lesser extent, depending on the damage that uh, has been done. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there, the dock sits on, the permanent portion of the dock sits on a pier. Uh, the dock is sinking roughly eight inches uh, and we're losing stones in the pier. Uh, the pier will be uh, repointed with stones replaced and the dock uh, lifted back up to level. Other than that, nothing new here. Uh, just repair. Is that all you have for a dock and you don't have any decks along? Uh, you, you have no boat lifts or anything like that, right? There's a dock and there's a boat lift on the, on the south side as well. Uh, boat lift and walkway out to the boat lift. And both of those are, as I understand, registered with, uh, with you guys. <clears throat> If I may say, um, I'm a little confused. It's the land of Kafir from the bottom of the house. And the, the well, land of Kafir, is that your land or is that your neighbor's land? No, Kafiro uh, was two owners ago. Uh, okay, okay. Built the house Fine. in the late 70s. So that is your land. That's your land, all right? Um, yes, what you see okay. is all my land. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, this this particular survey was done in 2010. Gotcha. So okay. It is it is current with uh, all outbuildings, uh, the permanent dock, everything as far as I know is accurate. Okay. What's the uh, uh, the water frontage front? I, one has 10 feet. Yeah. Number two has about 20 feet. You said three seems to go back. So. What's the width of your property on the water, sir? The, uh, I'd roughly 120 feet. As okay. the lies, uh, the wall itself is a little bit longer. So other than to repair the sections the way you described it, uh, and the, the, where it, just uh, let me divert for a minute, where the dock is, where is the pier under the dock? How far out into the water is it approximately? Uh, the fixed part of the dock is 36 feet out. The pier is maybe two thirds of that. Uh, Mr. Wilson, do you wanna start sharing your screen so you can show them the pictures? Cause the pictures are very good too. Pictures help. Thank you. All right, so this is an overall view of the property uh, looking from the uh, south. Uh, south side of the property, uh, 
needs very little help. There is no damage uh, to the, or no uh, wash out of the lawn here. It needs minor repointing. And you can see the walkway out to the, uh, the boat lift here. Uh, on the left side of this, uh, it will need repointing. And you'll see uh, behind that where there is a certain amount of washout as well. This is a view of that um, the southern portion that you were just looking at, uh, showing the uh, sinking of the lawn. Uh, it is fairly significant in this area, uh, in this particular place where the dog was looking. Um, you can actually see the lake through the seawall. All of this uh, happened in the last three years since I've moved in. David, what you're pointing to now would be section three on your diagram? One, two, yes. And it would, it would be the part that goes back toward the house? Correct. The, okay. the part that is perpendicular to the lake. Now, the dock that you're talking about repairing is not the dock or the adjacent to the boat lift that you talked about before. That's right. And you'll see okay. that shortly. Would you at some point put that on this map that we're looking at so we know where it is for the future? For the lift. The lift and the, and the, and the walkout dock? Yes, certainly. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a view of sections one and two. Uh, section two shown here needs to be uh, rebuilt as it is tilting uh, somewhat into the lake. And the uh, mason who looked at it was concerned that it was going to topple. And this is the section that is leaning somewhat. So this is looking north. And that's still section two. And that the is, grass would that be is section, section one. Two. Yep. And the grass would be section one in the back of the picture? Yep, essentially, yes. And that, that is in pretty good shape. Uh, no no uh, leaning and uh, no wash out of the lawn. Uh, this is section three. Um, Reasonably good shape for the wall, but there is washout. Uh, we need some backfill. You can see uh, here my coyote solution to geese, which actually seems to work pretty well. <laughs> um, also in section three, this is just to the south of the dock, uh, pretty severe washout. Will you be topping the wall again, or will the wall be a natural stone for top? Uh, I had not discussed that with the mason. Um, I assume that he is going to want to top it. But depending on the section, it may or may not need to be done. Certainly the portion that is crumbled uh, or is leaning and will be rebuilt, uh, I assume that he is going to want to uh, top that. You're going to restore the wall to the existing height or are you going higher? Nope, exactly the way it is. Just not falling over. Um, this shows the uh, fixed portion of the dock as well as the seasonal uh, floating portion. And you can see compared to the horizon there uh, that it is dipping a bit. Uh, that dip is roughly eight inches. At the back of the jet ski is where the pier is. It's in well, roughly eight feet of water. So you'll need to deep draw down to do this. Absolutely. And this, this is another view where it's pretty clear how uh, tilted it is.
you made mention that your dock, the walkout part is 20, 26 feet. I think you said or 36. 36. 36. Just for the record, I, I have gone through, I, I have his pulled up too, and it is registered. It was, um, it looks like all of what he has was registered. And just so you know, guys, uh, I think the dock is horribly ugly <laughs> and very uh, impractical. Uh, it's massively heavy. The uh, steel railings are in the wrong place and prevent you to get prevent you from getting where you want to go. Uh, the floating portion is quite heavy and difficult to get out uh, seasonally. I do want to replace the uh, dock at some point with something that is more practical and elegant, uh, but I can't do that this year. Would you would you consider that making what you contemplate part of the application and you have many years to do it? Uh, I believe I've got five years to do it. And I think that the next drawdown is five years from now. So I, I would prefer to hold off. You can always you. renew your permit uh, for another five years if you seek to do so with it before it expires. Yeah. So you really can get conceivably 10 years out of one permit. Understood. Uh, I, I think that the replacement of the dock is going to be a bit of an engineering challenge. Uh, and I need to do some research to figure out exactly what needs to happen there. So uh, maybe I missed it because I, I was looking for your, what are you doing with the pier here? Uh, the pier is going to be repointed and the stones that have fallen out replaced uh, the dock will be raised by about eight inches to make it level uh, and additional stones put underneath it. I believe there's enough stones already hanging on the bottom of the lake near the bottom, near the pier to actually do that. Uh, the mason who is going to do the work uh, did this once before, I believe two drawdowns ago, uh, well before I uh, moved into the uh, house. He has also repointed the uh, the seawall a couple of times. If I understand the project in the, with regard to the pier, is the floating portion of the dock is going to be floated away, and the uh, dock is going to be jacked up to allow for the work to be done underneath of it, and then put back on top of the work. Yes. And I'm sure your engineer, your your contractor knows that there are no machinery is allowed on that lake bed to do that work. Uh, he is well aware of that. As I mentioned, okay. he's done done this a couple okay. times before for the specific property. Uh, the plan is to stage materials for backfilling, uh, as well as uh, cement, on the north driveway of the property. There's plenty of room up there, uh, and then use wheelbarrows to bring uh, stones and other materials down. Uh, and all ex excavation is planned to be done by hand. And on your drawings, you, you don't show any silk fences or anything like that? Uh, silk fence, so you don't show anything. Be behind uh, section two. So an annotation in the, let's see what we got here. Uh, I do mention it in the narrative uh, in section two, uh, as well as I believe on the drawing, it indicates that salt fence will be used in the section of the wall that is going to be uh, torn down and uh, built back up. Steve, you've been on for how long? Myself? Yeah. 
Oh, I, I really don't remember. Probably certainly more than 10 years. This was, um, this was reviewed uh, 12, uh, in 2009. They had installed a patio near the water. Okay. I'm looking for the approval letter. Uh, I'll look for it at the next for the next meeting. Yep, and you can see a portion of that patio in this in this view. Yeah. What's your point, Pam? This was a that. I don't have my point yet. <laughs> <laughs> Did it have anything to do with bees? Yes, but yeah. I don't remember. I, you know, I don't know if that was just a unique, you know, <laughs> interesting story or yeah. Seeing the moment. Do you remember the bees? The wife was allergic to bees. <laughs> no. Something should be forgotten. <laughs> While we're waiting, and I don't know what we're waiting for, but while you're not, we're waiting, waiting, you're not waiting for anything. Okay. Uh, my sense is that you're going to need uh, uh, more silk fence and, and protection for the lake bed than just the little sections that you seem to be indicating, uh, just for our satisfaction, so to speak. Um, it's not extensive, I don't think, but I think you have to show something. Okay. Uh, where where would you recommend that those go? And I'll I'll pass this back to uh, Pam. If you if Pam, if you could bring up the uh, the survey, you can put them put the silk fence along the area where you're working, and then move it. You certainly, you're certainly going to need more protection than less protection in sections two and three, because you, you're apparently going to take down and, you know, something, sometimes one thing leads to another, to another, to another, and you may wind up rebuilding the, that whole two and three section of your wall. It just may come to that. Yeah. You know, but as, you, as you work backwards, you're not, you know, you want to reach a point of where everything is solid. And until you get to that point, it may be half the wall or, or the whole wall, kind of. Understood. And I, I am concerned about that, but yeah, it is what it is. Well, it is, but, you know, we're concerned about, you know, protecting the, the lake bed and anything that might be contaminating that lake bed. So that's the purpose of the silk fence. And, Understood. So and I, I don't know if you need hail bales. Yeah, I, I don't know if you need hail bales. Hail, hay bales with it, but I think you do need a fence. Okay. Any other issues from any other commissioners? Do you plan to do any plantings along, along the wall at the end of the project? Uh, was not my plan, no. I think that the coyote takes care of uh, the geese just fine. I have an issue. Go ahead, Kurt. While you're doing this, are you going to help create a buffer zone? A buffer zone will probably cut the grass. You have a certain amount of room between the grass and the lake, so that you take some grass from going into the lake. Just recommendations. Um, just, I, I did find uh, what it was that I was looking for. When this patio, this patio was undertaken, it's a patio where my, correct me if I'm wrong, is it right here? Yeah, that just, patio? just north of the back. Yeah, so the patio was installed in 2009 without approvals and um, the the then owner was brought to the commission uh, with a, for a cease and, 
desist order. And then, um, after, you know, I, I read the record and it was because the wife couldn't step on bees. He had installed this patio. Um, well, anyways, the, the condition of the approval back then was that a depressed buffer garden running the width of the uphill side, I'm just giving it to you really quick, uh, installed a depressed buffer garden running the width of the uphill side of the recently installed paver patio per letter dated 12-15-09 by the Northwest Conservation District consisting of 13 pages. Uh, and that, that has been done. There's, there is a- On the other side of the patio? Yeah, there's, as I understand it, uh, 12 inches of stone uh, in a gutter. A garden? Is a there gutter. a garden? Garden. So it's, no. it's not a garden. It's a it's a gutter. There. It's, no, I think they had requested like a veg. What what you were just talking about, like a vegetative buffer between the lawn and the patio. You know, I'd have to look. I I did read it, and I had asked Jim. You know, Jim Rollins was on the commission at the time. What he remembered. And um, as Melanelli verified, that would be a good indication of the patio's performance. Pib, you froze. Me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. No, I think I think Steve's saying he's frozen. If you look at his picture, he's not moving. <laughs> oh, there, you there you go. Pib, Pam, everything you, you said after the word Jim never came through to I think anybody. No, we all got it. It was just we all got it. <laughs> oh, I didn't get it at all. Okay. I you know, I, I'd have to go through it and I don't know like, you know, what do you do now? But you know, because the follow up wasn't done, you know, what is it, 2020? Um, but when you know, when the um, patio was done right here without a permit, um, he did you know the, the then owner came back to you and there was supposed to be like a vegetative buffer on the other side of the patio. Did it give any detail in how extensive it had to be? I, I could, that's, that's why, you know, I, I could look into it. And, you know, the only reason I'm bringing it up is because that's exactly what I was finding and recalling. And so Kurt was bringing it up about having a vegetative buffer and. Right, so I, I can't speak to vegetation, but I can speak to what is currently there. Uh, and there was roughly a... Uh, Do you want to pull up a, your photos? Yeah, I, I think I have a image that will cover that. Mm. <clears throat> so if, if you look at the back of the patio in this view, it's not easy to see, but there is a uh, about an 18, 18 inch uh, section of stone, yeah. gravel. Uh, there's certainly no <laughs> vegetation. Uh, there's gravel that, uh, as I understand, is about 12 inches deep and is there specifically for the purpose of dealing with runoff from the lawn. So it serves the purpose of a, uh, a vegetative barrier, but is implemented differently. Is that a shed? Or a boat shed after the left? Yes. Right here? Okay. I'm talking about between there and the patio. How? Well, you cut the grass, and not that you're going to do it intentionally, but you cut the grass, and grass clippings don't have my way to be collected before it hits the lake between the shed and the patio. If we go back to the other picture that you have before you sit I can throw a gully. Kurt, they're able to cut the grass and collect the grass 
in a small hand, you know, a powered mower that has a bag attached to it. So uh, I don't know how they do it, but but it's certainly feasible to collect the grass there. Okay, that well, makes sense. Yeah, and I uh, honestly, I've never cut the grass here. Um, I have a service that does it, and they bring in a uh, professional riding mower that that does not leave clippings on the lawn. It does leave a lot of dog turds, which I wish it just sucked up, but it doesn't. <laughs> Pam, where are we with that vegetative uh, barrier that has to be there or wasn't yeah, it? I can take copies and, you know, I, you know, where are you? You're, it didn't get installed and the property got transferred. That's where we are. David, would you be willing to sit down with Pam and talk about what should, what should be there and what possible solutions might exist so we can move ahead and accept your application? And yeah, I would, I would be happy to. Um, I would like to understand the reason for the vegetative barrier and how that is different from uh, the existing uh, stone gutter. It, as I understand it, the reason for the vegetative barrier would be to uh, retain the lawn uh, and prevent wash of water over the patio coming down off of the lawn. Is that correct? Or is there another reason for that? Yeah, I, there's a, um, I can provide the commission because, you know, that was back in the day when Sean Hayden was at Northwest Conservation District and he had provided the commission at that time with what, um, um, Candlewood Lake was doing and why they were doing it. Well, my sense is though that again, I think we caught David by surprise with, with this 11 year old uh, violation, if that's the term we want to use, uh, lack of knowledge, uh, transfer of owners that wasn't done, uh, lack of enforcement back 11 years ago. Um, and I, I don't want to just dwell on that at this point. So can we move ahead with accepting this application with an understanding that David would meet with Pam and try to come to some kind of an agreement on that buffer zone? You're asking the commission, right? Yeah. I have with that. I have I'm, I'm okay with that. That's fine. It's time. David, I'm you fine good? with that. I'm fine with that as long as um yeah, that's perfect. As long as he David, sits are down. you are you okay with that? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. So any other questions regarding the application in terms of what he's proposing for the repointing and uh here to the pier. Yeah, I just and, had one. I had one question, Dave. When you said you weren't prepared to do the dock this year, were you thinking about next year? Um, I was thinking about five years from now when I can afford it. I just bought okay. that house. No, I didn't I, know if that was like, oh, I'll do that next year. But okay, five years. My, my assumption, my assumption is that the dock will need to be replaced also during a uh, deep drawdown. Okay. And then when you do that, it'll probably be more cantilever type. Uh, I hope so, but it okay. certainly could be much simpler than, than it is. Okay, no that's all I had. Uh, a I, for purposes of clarity, we're talking about repairing the stone wall and the pier. Correct. Mm -hmm. Period. Yes. Okay. Okay. Do we have a motion? Just make sure you discuss significant. Right. Do we need a public hearing? No, 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 no. Okay. Somebody like to make a motion to accept? I make a motion to accept application 20-34, owner David M. Wilson, 
622 East Wakefield Boulevard, repairs to Lake Stonewall and Pier. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you very much, David. See you next month. Thanks, guys. Okay, take care. It's a special meeting, so you, you can't have any other discussion, just so you know. Okay, okay. so we're not going to talk about anything on the agenda, like agent determination warnings? No, community. that's not on it. Nope, there's nothing on the agenda to that effect. So then we can close the meeting? Yep. I'll make a motion we close the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in favor. Hi. Hi, just Thank as you very a, much. Just as a reminder, next week, the same time, 6.30, we yes. another meeting, a public hearing on the school. Yep. On the school. I'm going to send you the link so that you can uh, have a good four hours of watching, and then you can participate with that. Pam, I didn't realize I was late on that. You probably figured that. I was running uh so you guys We're couldn't good. start without me right, <laughs> right. no you We're couldn't good. start right that's why oh, so you held on there for like 25 minutes had to because we didn't have a quorum so that's why i was blowing up your phone and your emails <laughs> i was driving sorry i didn't see any yeah. of that until just good. now <laughs> good all right good night everybody good, night. good, night. good, night. good right. job steve yep. thanks yeah. steve thank, thank you, you. Whoa. Whoa. good night uh, Good night.